Are you serious? Are you serious? Well, President Trump is very serious and as it comes to North Korea. And uh, today, while in Poland, uh, he made a very strong indication that he's running out of patience and you get the feeling that some type of military inter intervention is about ready to take place. Trump says he is mulling over the fact of a very severe response to North Korea's missile testing. The U.S. president says he is determined to confront the threat from North Korea after his ambassador to the United Nations raises the prospect of a military action if diplomacy failed. Matter of fact, Donald Trump said he is considering some very severe things in a response to North Korea's successful test of an intercontinental ballistic missile uh, this week. And on the 4th of July even, as he called on other nations to exert pressure on North Korea over its very bad behavior. Matter of fact, President Trump's comments made in Poland came after the U.S. ambassador to the United Nations made a push for new sanctions at a Security Council meeting uh, there and said that America's, quote, considerable military forces could be used against North Korea. Nikki Haley, the U.S. ambassador of the United States to the United Nations, told the meeting uh, that the United States would submit a draft resolution within days that, quote, raises the international response in a way that is proportionate to North Korea's escalation, but warned that Washington had options if diplomacy fails. Quote, the United States is prepared, she said, to use a full range of our capacities to defend ourselves and our allies, according to Haley. Now, one of our capacities, she says, lies with our considerable military force. We will use them if we must, but we prefer not to have to go in that direction. She said the United States was eyeing penalties against any country that does business with this outlaw regime. And Trump said the United States would confront the North Korean threat, but noted that he would not draw a red line. Quote, Trump said, I don't like to talk about what I've planned, but I have some pretty severe things we're thinking about. And that doesn't mean we're going to do them, but I'm thinking about it. So anyway, President Trump getting tired of the rhetoric, getting tired of the situation, uh, that Kim Jong-un is causing him a headache. He's a thorn in his side for sure, but he's certainly becoming a, a danger to the free world. Matter of fact, Trump is scheduled to meet with the Chinese President Jinping uh, on the sidelines of the G20 summit in Hamburg, Germany this week, where he will travel. Of course, he just landed there. He just left Poland. He just landed in Hamburg, Germany today. He's going to meet with Chinese President on the side, and then tomorrow, President Trump is going to have a scheduled meeting with President Vladimir Putin of Russia, uh, which uh, is also, they're going to talk about North Korea. So he's going to talk to China about North Korea. He's going to talk to Russia about North Korea. Certainly, North Korea is going to be on the table in front of all of the nations at the G20 summit. Now, uh, so we're going to pray for the president. This is going to be difficult sledding for sure. This is a dangerous situation we have and we truly need to pray uh, because we're talking nuclear escalation. We're talking nuclear war and just one rogue nuke fired off by Kim Jong-un into a major city like Tokyo, Japan, Honolulu, Hawaii, Seoul, South Korea, just to name some potentials, would cause a devastating loss of life and a catastrophic event of a biblical proportion. This is where we're at, folks. We're on the edge of eternity. We're at the brink of the beast. And when there's chaos, well, that's when Lucifer loves to make his move. And I can tell you that I've been saying it all year. The Lord revealed to me that this year, 2017, would be a year of great chaos for the world and yet a year of great blessings for the body of Christ. And that's both are coming true. The chaos, the rhetoric, the, the craziness, the catastrophic events, 
the wars and rumors of wars, the threats, the name calling, the line, red line drawing, the finger pointing, the eye poking, the pu hair pulling, all's been going on, saber rattling. But something big could happen. We've already had enough terror attacks, innocent people killed. How many attacks in the United Kingdom? How many in France? How many are we going to get all over the Middle East? The madness continues. ISIS is still uh, is just as evil as ever. Even the Philippines are dealing with not only earthquakes, but they're dealing with ISIS controlling one of their cities of 200,000 people. I mean, folks, this cancer is spreading. And so we need to be in prayer. Earthquakes today still threatening Yellowstone super, uh, super volcano there in Lincoln, Montana, 5.8 with a series of aftershocks and then a 6.5 hit the Philippines. I mean, these are just two people are dead, 100 are injured and probably more. Uh, we just got some situations developing right now that needs a lot of prayer. Don't miss today's live broadcast. I'm going to try to cover all of them. And of course, I went to two different, I heard two different speakers last night. I give you a report on uh, uh, a full report in tomorrow's show, but I will give you a partial report today. I did hear Dr. Michael T. Osterholm. He, is a, he has a PhD. He's the director of the Center for Infectious Disease Research and Policy uh, from the University of Minnesota, but he works for the federal government. He's the director. And uh, his five main concerns of a pandemic, including bioterrorism, and I'll also give you an update on uh, uh, another speaker I met and his promise to come on my show. He's going to be a guest on my show. He's, he's been on Fox News. He's been on CNN. And that's Dr. James Mitchell, a clinical psychologist and a former CIA agent who worked for President George W. Bush and carried out enhanced interrogations, including for 21 days, he used enhanced interrogations on Khalid Sheikh Mohammed and 16 other radical Islamic leaders being held at Guantanamo Bay. And he tells us, yes, enhanced interrogation does work. It's not maybe the greatest method. Waterboarding, he said, may not be the greatest method. He, he, he says there's actually some other physical coercions he think would even work better. But if you don't do anything, you're not going to get anything. Okay? So I'll, I'll break this down for you. There's Heidi right now is listening to a presentation on the newest innovations of, and technology that's coming forth in the next 18 months. We'll get you more information. The New World Order is, is pushing hard, and we're trying to find out their plan in advance, keep you up to speed so that you know that all the current world events, how they relate to biblical prophecy, it's all coming to pass. We're in the last days. Don't miss today's live broadcast. starts at 12 noon Eastern at my website at www.paulbigleyprophecy.com.